Hey, what's up my beautiful people? How are you guys doing today? This is Kiko and today we're going to be talking about the Japanese alphabet. Now, our alphabet, the American alphabet, it's, you know, the ABCs, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You form letters together, those letters make words, we read them, blah, blah, blah. Simple enough. Well, in Japan, they have like two, three alphabets. They have, they have many different ways to write letters and words. And it can be a bit confusing if you don't know the Japanese language. And when I was first learning Japanese, I got kind of confused because I was like, you know, what's the difference between hiragana, katakana? You know, what's different about them? And well, I kind of have an idea now, or I, I feel like I do have a pretty good idea of what the differences are. And this is what this video is about. I'm going to teach you guys, or kind of explain to you guys what the differences are between like the different types of way to write Japanese. And what are my credentials? Well, I've been studying Japanese for a couple years now and I did go to Japan for a year and interacted with Japanese people so I feel pretty confident that I know what the differences are. But if you guys know more information than me or if I get something wrong, leave it in the comment section, explain it to me, you know, because I want to keep learning and also don't want to teach like the viewers out there um, wrong information and you know. So we're going to be talking about five alphabets and when you first start to learn Japanese you're going to hear like these five types and I mean they're not all the same but it kind of makes sense like I've explained it. So the first one is Romaji. Now Romaji is the stuff that me and you read, the ABCs, the regular Roman letters that pretty much all of us can read. You know A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever. We can all read Romaji but just because you can read it doesn't mean you can understand it. You know like if you can read something in French or in Spanish, yeah you can read the letters but it doesn't mean you can understand the word. So Romaji, those are the Roman letters. Japanese people don't really use Romaji. Like for them, Romaji does look cool. Kind of like for us, the Japanese letters look cool. Um, they don't really use it. It's kind of like used for us foreigners to understand like how to say words in Japanese. So for example, if me and you can't read or understand Japanese and we go to Japan, you can get like a tourist pamphlet. And in the pamphlet, they'll say like how to say thank you, arigato, and it'll be written in Romaji because you can read it, I can read it. So that's what Romaji is. They don't really use it, but they do think it looks cool. And and it's more for like us foreigners. All right, so the second type is hiragana. Now hiragana is the actual Japanese alphabet. There is a total of 46 characters and they all end with a vowel, except for the letter N, which is just like, mm, but every other character does end in a vowel. Now hiragana is used for Japanese words that originate from Japan or are traditionally from Japan and are, you know, originally Japanese words. And it's also used for Japanese people's names. Now hiragana can also be written in kanji to be made easier to read and Japanese people can also write their name in kanji. Now hiragana and kanji are two different types but just know that hiragana is like the alphabet, the basic alphabet and it is used for Japanese words and Japanese people's names. All right so the third type is katakana. Now every hiragana character, all 46 characters have a katakana counterpart. Now they are written differently but they are said the same. So for example this is a in hiragana and this is a in katakana. Now if you write a word in hiragana like kawaii which means cute this is how it's written and if you write it in katakana this is how it's written so what's the difference why do they use two different sets of alphabets that sound exactly the same but different characters well katakana is for words that did not originate in japan and they are words that also can't be written in kanji so katakana words are foreign words and some examples of this are like the word facebook for them they say you know facebook buku write that in katakana. They also write like the word pizza in katakana, elevator in katakana. So they are foreign words that did not originate in Japan and they cannot be written in kanji. Well maybe with some exceptions but I can't think of any right now. And also foreigners like me and you, we will write our names in katakana. So I mean that's what katakana is. And also yes Japanese people sometimes do write their names in katakana. You know that's that's pretty normal but normally for us foreigners we will use katakana. Like if we wrote our names in hiragana it'll look kind of weird like I tried doing it one time it looks kind of weird like does it, it doesn't feel natural but I'm also like learning Japanese and I feel like I'm really used to the katakana right there kiko katakana all right so now the fourth kind is kanji and oh man kanji is really hard to explain now kanji has thousands and thousands of characters there's so many characters and each has its own meaning now kanji means chinese characters so kanji originated from china and the japanese adopted the kanji character system so why did the japanese adopt it well if a japanese word is written out in hiragana yeah japanese people can read it and understand it but if you write like a 
paragraph, a book, and hiragana only, it becomes really difficult and annoying to read. And the best way to explain this is, let's take a large number, like let's say like the number 500,632 written out in letters. Now if you read that, like that's kind of annoying to read. It's kind of like, now why don't you just write out the number, you know, like if you wrote out the number, it'll be much easier for me and you to read. Now for them, it's kind of the same way. Like if you wrote out like only the words in hiragana, like it'll be difficult for them to read. So it's kind of like, for us, why don't you just write out the number? For them, it's like, why don't you just write out the kanji? Write the kanji, it'll be easier for everybody to read. Cause you know, kanji simplifies things. It makes things easier to read in general. So that's why they adopted the Chinese characters. So essentially hiragana for them is like writing out the letters. Like let's say for the number one, O and E. For them, that's hiragana. And to write out the actual number one, one, for them, that's kanji. So does that kind of make sense? I hope that makes sense. So now some question that people bring up and that I kind of wondered about myself. Can Chinese people read the Japanese kanji and can Japanese people read the Chinese characters because they are technically using the same characters? Well, I asked some of my Japanese friends and Chinese friends about this and pretty much their answers were just because it's the same character doesn't mean it's read the same way. So for example, the number one, if me and you look at it, we're going to say one. But if a Spanish person looks at it, they're going to say uno. So for like the Chinese character, a Japanese person is going to read it a different way and a Chinese person is going to read it. But my Chinese friend said that if they don't speak any Japanese, when they look at Japanese kanji, they can get a general idea of what it means. And same for Japanese people, they could get like a general idea like, oh, I, I think I know what that means, but you know, I'm not sure. I don't know, something like that. I hope you guys can understand it because kanji is really difficult and kanji is also the hardest to learn. If you're learning Japanese, do not take like kanji as like a priority to learn because that's going to take time and you should be practicing like conversational Japanese and just learn like katakana and hiragana like that's more important and kanji worry about it later because man kanji is difficult even for Japanese people it's difficult to like memorize and to write but you know it's kanji kanji is difficult just in general I don't know how the Chinese people do it because Chinese people write in pure kanji so the fifth one the fifth one is furigana furigana is pretty much hiragana it's the same thing well it is hiragana and furigana is used for kanji what I mean by that is if you can't read a kanji Kanji, like there's so many kanjis if you can't read a kanji there's gonna be like a little furigana in parentheses that says this is how you read it so for example if you see the number two you, you'll be like okay that symbol looks familiar but I don't remember what it means and then in parentheses two. Oh, it's the number two okay I remember two so it's kind of like that so if you don't remember a kanji or you forget a kanji even Japanese people who forget kanjis there's a little furigana or hiragana on the side that says how to read the kanji so furigana what I like to call little hiragana just little hiragana on the side to help you out because kanji is difficult so an example of furigana is in manga like if you read manga or if you read manga in japanese the manga has kanji in there and then on the side there's like little furigana just to help you guys out so that was pretty much the five different types of like i guess like written ways you can write japanese that you will come across when you start to learn japanese romaji the abcs the basic roman characters mean you can read hiragana the basic japanese alphabet used for japanese words that originate in japan and Japanese people's names, katakana, foreign words, and foreigner names, kanji, Chinese characters that the Japanese people adopted makes things easier to read and easier to understand, and furigana, which is used alongside kanji to make kanji readable if you don't remember the kanji. So those are the five types. And one last thing I want to point out is that Japanese people do write their names in kanji normally, and foreigners like me and you, we can also write our name in kanji, but you just got to find like the right kanji to pretty much um, adopt your name so for me like I tried looking for a kanji that said you know Kiko now the Japanese word for tree is ki and this is how ki is written in kanji and the Japanese word for kind of like public it, mean, it, it means public like when you read it but the beginning part like how you read it is ko kou and it's used for like words like uh, koen which means park so I got the kanji for tree and the kanji for public so putting those two kanjis together was key 
cool. So what does that mean? Tree, public, public tree. And I asked my teacher what that meant because I was trying to make my name kanji, you know, and I didn't really know that many kanjis. So I showed my teacher, I'm like, hey, so this is my name in kanji, right? Tree and public. And she's like, yeah, but that's kind of weird. Like, you, do you want your name to mean, you know, like, uh, I forgot what she said. I think she said it was like pine tree or oak tree. I, I don't know. I don't know what she said. But then she went out of her way to find kanji for my name. And she found two really good words or two really good meanings. And the first one is this one. And I guess that means like nobility. And how you read that is also key. And then the second one she found was the kanji for tiger. One thing I want to point out, guys, is like kanjis can be read in many different ways. So it's not just one way that you can read a kanji. So one way that you can read the kanji for tiger is ko. So then I got the kanji for nobility slash royalty, which is read as ki. And then the kanji for tiger, which is read as ko. So together it's kiko. And yes, that's what it means, noble tiger. So my teacher went out of her way to find these two kanjis, put them together and said like, okay, so when you read this, it's going to be read as kiko, but the meaning of both kanjis is noble tiger. And I'm like, you know what? That sounds cool. I'm taking it. I'm flying with it. And that's my name in kanji. And I'm sticking with it because I really like it. You know, noble tiger, right here. Here I am. So when I was in Japan and before I came back to the States, I went to a clothing store, a Japanese clothing store, and I got a custom made t-shirt, which is this one right here. And on the front, well, I got a little ghost right here. And then my name in Katakana, Kiko. And on the back, well, Man, I didn't even know that I needed an update. My bad, guys. Let's put another time. Well, anyway, on the back, I have my name in kanji, and it looks pretty badass. So, that's my name written in kanji, and I really like it, and I really appreciate that my teacher went out of her way to go find me, you know, like a good way to, to write my name in kanji. So, if you guys are learning Japanese, you know, or if you have a Japanese friend, you know, you could ask them, like, hey, how would I write my name in kanji, and what would it mean? But anyway, that's the end of this video. Um, thanks for watching, and if you guys start to learn Japanese, I hope this kind of helps and gives you an idea so you don't get too confused of what's going on. And yeah, with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one, all right? Peace out.